last year I made a video about how everybody was wrong about ISO 20022. It blew up. Some people got a little mad. Was I just spreading FUD or did I have a point? But here's the deal. There is no way for a blockchain to be ISO 20022 compliant. ISO 20022 is a standard syntax for bank messaging systems that replaces the SWIFT protocol. So there is simply no way for a blockchain to be compliant with it. And there's no such thing as certification. It says that right on the ISO 20022 site. Now, I was wrong about this too initially. I found out through JT Invests With You's video with Algorand Foundation CEO Stacy Warden, where she said, I don't know where any of this came from. There's simply no way for the technology to be compatible. But is that where the story ends? Or is there more to this? I recently interviewed John Woods, who is the Algorand Foundation's chief technical officer, and he went through everything to do with ISO 20022 and how it relates to cryptocurrency and a possible avenue where I, crypto can still have something to do with ISO 20022, just not the blockchain directly. Let's take a look at what John has to say. I want to talk about ISO 20022 because this whole situation just baffles me, right? Now, sure. I, like many, many crypto YouTubers and a lot of other people online, we're talking about, you know, you always see these lists where there's like six cryptos that are ISO 20022 compliant. And, uh, you know, Algorand is on that list. Or of course, I'm in, in primarily focused on Algorand. So I'm like, yeah, great, awesome. And then I mentioned it in one video, just kind of an offhand way. It wasn't, the video wasn't even about that. And someone in the comments said, hey, you know, that's all nonsense, what, right? And I was like, what are you talking about? Everyone's talking about this. And they go, yeah, look at this interview that JT did with Stacey Warden. And about halfway, you know, about a half hour into the interview, she says, you know, she basically says, well, hold on. We don't know what they're talking about when they say it's compliant with ISO 2022. So then I then I started digging into it. I went dark combed through the whole ISO 2022 website. I'm like, I see no mention of crypto. As far as I can tell, this is a this is a language standard, like a syntax standard for bank messages. I know there is a mechanism for uh, for payments within these messages. I don't know a lot about this. I, it, this is beyond my pay grade, frankly, but I did as best as I could to research it. As far as I could tell, you know, there's no way, just like Stacey says, there's no way for a crypto to be compatible with ISO 20022. You kind of mentioned that a little bit in my comments as well. I saw yeah. the ex engine chief engineer of XRP mention that, which is interesting because XRP is supposed to be, now that's supposed to be one that's supposed to be certified and there's no certification whatsoever for ISO 20022. I mean, they say that flat out in their website. So yeah. all of that is a nice way of setting up, like, is there <laughs> any there there to this at all? You know, what, how should people think about this? Yeah, totally interesting. So actually, so Adventurist was the the um, ex uh, XRP engineer. Was, was that person also kind of saying that it that it's nonsense uh, in terms yep. of XRP as well? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. So I think you know here, here's something we'll just chat about very briefly, more broadly, which is that I see those infographics too about every cryptocurrency from Ethereum to Monero to Cardano to whatever, and um, a lot of them are just total nonsense. And sometimes it can be totally really quite difficult to, to kind of disambiguate what's real from what's not. And right. um, I guess it's just the world we live in. Information travels so fast and it's propagated so 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 trivially on things like Twitter. And if it's if it's mm -hmm. a message that feels like it fits it fits your narrative or it fits what you're hoping to be the case, which is you know a sophisticated system that you're invested in or whatever, um, it's just natural to want to propagate good news about it, whether or not it's it's necessarily true. And mm -hmm. so, um, just to maybe dig into this ISO standard, of course, these ISO standards are wonderful because they, yeah. um, you know, outside of crypto uh, and outside of even even finance, they give standards to industries uh, and allow us all to align on a thing and, and not have to do things different ways. Um, and so, this is this is a great in general. Um, the ISO standards are very much kind of a messaging standard. It's a platform. Um, so yeah, the, you know, these are just platforms for standardizing the way we form messages. And, and like, the, the the quite literal answer is no. Uh, Algorand is is not specifically uh, aligned to an ISO standard. And and how can I say that? I can say that because if you look at the components within within the stack, so it's the consensus the ledger rules um, and the network stack. If you look at the protocol layered over that, if you look at the AVM, which is executing the smart contracts, none of those uh, components have been coded to be compliant against uh, an ISO 2022 standard or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, but as I said on Twitter, you know, it's not not compliant. 
as in like there's nothing prohibiting Algorand from being com compliant. And in fact, it wouldn't really make sense um, to my mind as an architect to implement that kind of stuff at the protocol layer. You wouldn't necessarily have those kind of messages floating around at the protocol layer unless your blockchain was dedicated to those types of messages. And instead, what makes much more sense is when you're communicating or implementing smart contracts, that's at the level, the application layer is where you implement adherence mm. to a specification like that. So, uh, you know, you and I might make an, an enterprise grade application. We might have a DeFi application and we might say that we're integrating against some back end uh, somewhere and we want to be able to, for our smart contracts to be able to generate those kind of messages. So we'd have a back end that is compliant, that does generate those messages of that format and dispatches them uh, out to a Web2 uh, API. And we can use our smart contracts to build those messages and other things, but again, uh, not at the protocol level. And I think, just more broadly, uh, outside of, of things which are quite sophisticated, like ISO standardization, you mm -hmm. see it even in terms of transactions per second or TVL or other things that are much uh, less technical. And they're still, uh, in some cases, uh, these infographics are wrong. So, yeah, a recommendation for people just to kind of double check on things before you you, you just assume it's, it's correct, even if it does sound like it's going to be a good thing for you. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you know, there's nothing precluding Algorand because it's Turing complete, because you can effectively express any kind of logic within within the smart contracts because the smart contracts are Turing complete. Um, there's nothing to stop you adhering to any of those specifications. So Algorand is, like I like to say, not not compliant, could be compliant, mm. but you have to go and implement that at the application layer yourself. Right. It's not something that we're going to be doing at the protocol layer, um, to my knowledge. So there you have it. It kind of confirms what we've been saying, what everybody has been wrong about ISO 2022, and what how I was initially wrong too. Based on what John Woods is saying, it does appear that there is an avenue for the blockchain at the application layer to work with ISO 2022. And it doesn't mean that uh, crypto won't be used for cross-border payments. It's just that it seems to be more of a syntax issue or a semantics issue rather that there's a compliance because there's simply nothing to be compliance to. But as John says, it's not not compliant. In other words, it's kind of neutral and there's plenty of ways you know, Algorand and other blockchains can be used for cross-border payments through the application layer. Uh, Algorand, I think, is uniquely is absolutely set up to be used for cross-border payments. It has low transaction fees, is very, very fast finality in less than four seconds, and has a high level of security, kind of hitting the trilemma there that you need for a good cross-border payments. Now, there are other protocols that also come close to this that could also be very useful. A lot of those ones that you see on the list are probably there for that reason. But as far as a blockchain actually being compliant, doesn't really exist. That's all I have for you this week. I hope you enjoyed that clip and uh, subscribe for more. And we'll see you in the future.